Today we're going to discuss the Open Air Business Intelligence Connector, and it's timely that we're doing this uh, as they have just released a couple of changes in the last release that came out this week, which we will discuss. So let me give you an introduction to what this is, why it matters. The Open Air Business Intelligence Connector gives you point and click access to open air from existing reporting, business intelligence workflow and integration applications. Connector allows you to access open air data as an OData version for a data feed without the need to write any code. That's directly from open air's documentation on their feature on the open air business intelligence connector. Here's what that means. The, the business intelligence connector gives you a, a method of publishing reports and list views out of open air to various other BI tools, or even tools that you don't necessarily think of as BI tools. Um, this publishing action can be scheduled. It can be done manually. With the schedule, it ensures that that data shows up automatically in whatever tool you have reading the OData feed. In other words, you can get these reports from open air to another application without any manual intervention at all on a schedule. Um, with the latest data from open air some there's some real power here uh, we're going to kind of talk about why this matters and how it's used so if you run into the o data word and you're not sure what that is this is what o data is there's the standard definition uh, defines best practice for this and that what it means is that it's a protocol that these systems use to talk to each other to send data back and forth. It's a standard. Uh, it's a Microsoft built standard actually, which uh, a lot of applications have adopted, uh, not as their only method of accessing data, but as a method that they provide for accessing data. So here's what you can publish out of open air. Any report that you own, you can publish any report that is shared with you, you can publish, provided you have the right access in open air, which is a role setting. And any list view that you own, you can publish or that has been shared with you. So you have these options of sending all of this data from open air to this server, which can then be picked up by other applications. And just so you are aware, in a few minutes here, we're gonna to get to an actual demo so you can see how this works, uh, rather than relying on my poorly written descriptions. There is a new feature now, which is what you see at the bottom of the screen here that they're calling the publish type of publications. And what this allows you to do is send data to this OData server so that it can be picked up by any other tool, which is the business intelligence connector option. You can send data so that it can only be picked up by the Nets connector if you have the standard open air NetSuite integration. So you're making data available to that NetSuite integration that isn't necessarily uh, eligible to be transferred to NetSuite otherwise. Or you can make it available to just the user scripting option in open air. Now that feature has been available since the April release where we can get to uh, data that's been published to the OData server from a script. Um, but this ability to select what type of publishing you're doing is, is new with this latest release. Now, you should note that no matter which of these you choose, the user scripting option is always available. So if you push to a business intelligence connector, you can also read that data with a script. Uh, the reason that that third option even exists is in case you want to make data available only to the scripting engine. Uh, but it's available to the scripting engine in the other two options as well. The types of permissions that you have for these, there's three different sets for reports and two for lists. So with a report, you can publish this out to this server so that only the owner can see it. It's for your use. You're going to pull it into your business intelligence report, and only you are going to be able to do that highly secure, nobody else can see it. This is the kind of thing you would use if you were 
publishing cost data, for example, you may, if you're on the HR side or even on the finance side and you're looking for a cost data report, it's not something you want anyone else to see. You can publish that with your own permission so that only you can see it. You can publish it with what Open Air calls the recipient's permissions. What that means is that you export the data and whoever opens that and reads it uh, can only see what they could normally see in open air. So if you publish 100 projects, but user X only has access to 60 of them through their open air filter set, when they open this data feed through whatever tool they're using, they'll still only have access to the 60 that they could see in open air. This is what we usually recommend people use for this publishing permission. Or you could publish it with the owner's permission set. So in that same example, if you have access to all 100 projects and you publish this report, anyone who reads it is going to have access to the same thing you do because you're the owner of the report. This can be dangerous. Um, it, you may not even realize that person X shouldn't be seeing this data or person Y should be seeing that data. The time to use this is when you know you've got data that is that should be available to everyone uh, regardless of the permissions that you don't have anything confidential in there that you want people to be able to see exactly what you see. With list views, there's really only two options. There's a private list view, which is something you can publish out to OData server that you can see. And then there's a public view that anybody with access to your open air instance can see. So there's really just those two options available uh, for list views. Here is a very, very, very small sample of some apps that support OData. This is by no means uh, any kind of an endorsement of any of these apps. It's just something to get your, your brain juices flowing a little bit to see what kind of applications this would be used for. You know, a lot of these are major reporting type apps um, that, you, that have this OData protocol embedded in them that you can use to um, view this data that's coming out of open air to this OData server. However, far and away, the biggest use for this uh, application and for this data is that guy. Excel has a built-in OData feed service that it can use to pull in data right out of these OData servers. And that's primarily what folks are using this for. There are there are a few clients, not quite a few actually, that are using another tool um, that they have an enterprise-wide type of business intelligence tool like a Tableau or something of that nature, or Power BI. Um, but they find that the greatest use of this is for individual people going in to, to digest and consume that data with Microsoft Excel. And simply because it's got the lowest um, barrier to, to productivity. Uh, everybody's got it. Most folks can use it, uh, and it's very simple to get this data in there. In fact, it's so simple that we're going to take a big risk here and do a live demo. Um, these always go perfectly, perfectly well, according to plan. So let's see how this goes. So what you should see now, make it a little bigger for you. This is an open air demo instance. Uh, and we've got some, this is our report screen some saved reports here that I've saved. What you might see on this action link that you might not be familiar with is this third icon. It's like a document with a little diamond shape or something on there. That means that you have the open air business intelligence connector in place and functional, and you can publish these reports out to an OData server. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm actually gonna take one that I previously published uh, to show you how it works. So here's a project burn report. I'm going to go ahead and run that on a separate screen. If I wanted to publish that out uh, to my OData server, all I have to do is click this little publish icon. So let me show you what the report looks like in OpenAir. Uh, a number of projects. Here's the client. Here's its budget. And here's some metrics, some, some financial numbers about those projects. Uh, how much we build, um, how much in the budget minus what's been billed, et cetera. 
standard financial type stuff. Now, if I go ahead and publish this, here's how it works. It provides this little dialogue. It says, okay, here's the, the report name. Here's its status, it's currently published. Um, here's the type. So remember those publishing types I talked about, business intelligence connector, NetSuite connector user scripting. This was published using the business intelligence connector type. This is when it was last published. This is the number of the rows of data that it published out there. Uh, and here is the link. This one's gonna be important. These last two rows are pretty key. This tells you this is the service URL to get to this report from another tool. So it gives you the exact URL that you need to to get to all of your reports from whatever tool that you're using. If you wanna to get to this specific report, you tack this on to the end of this. So this is your server URL and where your reports live. And this is this specific report that you would just add to the end of that uh, web address to get to this report. Now the permissions, you recall I mentioned that there's three ways we can do this. We either don't share it, so only I can see it. We share it with the recipient's permission, so we share it with the owner's permissions. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is. And let me show you how to pull this report now that this has been published into, we'll use Excel, but the process is very similar depending on the tool that you're using. So let me open an instance of Excel and we'll pull this data in from this report. Now I'm using the uh, Excel uh, version that comes with Microsoft 365. If you're using a desktop installed version, uh, Office 2016 is common, uh, sometimes Office 2019, less common, um, then you're gonna see things just a little bit differently, but we'll show you how that works also. It's not very different. In order to pull this data in, I'm gonna go to this data tab up at the top. I'm gonna click this get data on the left side. I'm gonna go to from other sources. It's not really pulling from a file or a database pulling from another source and look at that, I've got an OData feed option right there. It's like, okay, that's what I want. I'm pulling it from an OData feed. Okay, now uh, Excel is gonna ask me, where is this data feed? And this is where we have that URL that it showed us where it published. So we're gonna put that in here and that's basically telling it where this report lives. Now note that I added the report 155, which was the ID of this report to the end of this big URL so it knows exactly what report I'm after. I say, okay. It says, all right, well, here's what your report basically looks like. Okay, yep, that looks right. If I wanted to at this point, I could click this transform data button. I'm not going to, but I could. And that would allow me to put on extra filters on this data if I wanted to, sort it differently, you know, manipulate it a few different ways that Power Query in Excel supports. Now this is not a Power Query tutorial, that would take quite a bit longer. Um, so, but just be aware that that's what this transform data is all about. It lets you then take the data that's in this report and massage it a bit before you bring it into Excel. But I'm gonna go ahead and say load and it says, all right, I'm gonna think about this for a bit. And there's my data. Now, there's one step in here that got skipped uh, because demos. Uh, because I had previously logged into this earlier today, it didn't require me to log in. Normally, when you first go to that URL, you'll be then presented with a, a login box, a dialog box. It's gonna ask you for a username and a password. We'll show you here in, a, in another slide what you need to put into that. But just so you're aware, this doesn't, just because I didn't have to log in, doesn't mean that nobody has to log in. It's only because I already did and my system remembers, my credentials remembers who I am, remembers that I already logged in. And there's my report data. And this is exactly what you saw in open air. You can see the names of the fields are a little bit wonky. They've got some underscores here that maybe don't necessarily make sense. You are gonna lose a little bit in translation this way. Um, so you have to be aware of that and, and plan accordingly. 
uh, but it's not too difficult to, to work around a lot of those limitations or expectations. Now I'm gonna show you a list view also, so you can see what that looks like uh, when we pull that into OData. So if we go to uh, our bookings list, I've created a list view that I've called standard bookings, showing the resource project, uh, client projects, client and the project's name, the project's manager, start date and end date of my bookings, et cetera, et cetera, total hours, you get the idea. And I've gone ahead and saved that as a, as a list layout. Now, if you're not familiar with this feature, this has been around a couple of years now, it allows you to save exactly the kind of view that you're looking at so that other people can see it as well or so that you can come back to it. You can save a number of different views. If you're using it for one purpose or another, you might wanna have different views. It's, it's a nice feature, uh, very useful. But as I'm saving it, I have this option right here, publish to the BI connector. I can publish it as private or public, like we talked about. So I can see it or so anybody in my organization can see it. Um, so I've gone ahead and published this as a public view. Now this one's a little bit trickier to find the URL for. Um, it's the same as the report URL, except instead of reports, it says list views. But the, the number of the list view, how do you find the exact list view that you're looking for can be a little bit tricky. Um, the way that I do it, and you, you, I don't know if you have to be a full administrator to do this, but you have to have the right permission set to do this. Under the administration option in OpenAir, under the organization in global settings, is a list of all your organization's saved list views. When you look at this, you can see, oh, okay, here's my standard bookings one. So now all I need is the internal ID of this. And now I know the number of the list view. Well, unfortunately, in the demo instance that we have from OpenAir, they don't make internal ID a column that we can choose. So we can't actually see it here on the list view. That doesn't mean we can't see it. It just means it's not obvious. But if you look at these little icons over on the left, if you hover over any of those, this is a little bit tricky, but you, you'll see uh, that there's a URL that shows up at the bottom of the screen. And if we click one of these, um, it will take us to that URL. And in that URL is the list view. Now, unfortunately, doing any of this causes us a problem. It's going to, to set it as or unset it as public or set it as, as default or whatever. It's to take an action we don't necessarily want it to take. And the only way to see that number is to actually click one of these in theory. What I do is I right click one and I say, copy the link address. And then I open up a new page and I say, what is that link address? Oh, there it is. And look right there, list layout equals nine. Now I know what it is. Now that's a bit of a number of hoops to jump through to get it. The good news is once you published it, you only have to do that once. Now you know what it is. I could actually even go back into my save view and save it with the number. I could say, you know, standard bookings underscore nine or something like that. And now I know it's list view nine. It's a little bit of a hoop to jump through, but it's not, not terrible. So if I was gonna do this in Excel now, you know, go to a different sheet, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say data, get data from other sources, from an OData feed. And now I need my URL for list views, which is the same as it is for reports, except with the word list views instead of reports. And then list view and the list view number I'm looking for at the end. So instead of reports slash report 155, I'm using list view slash list view Go ahead and click OK. It says, OK, here's what I found. You can transform it again, like we talked about. Or I can just load it in. I load it in. It says, all right, let me think about this for a minute. This one's a little bit longer, so it's going to think about it a little bit longer, but it doesn't take too long. And there's my list view. 
And that's the whole process. Now this works the same way in a number of other tools. They all have a way of importing data through OData. And you set it up that way, you do the same steps. You provide it with a, a login, you provide it with the URL, the address of the report or the list view, and it takes it from there. And then you can manipulate this however your BI tool allows you to. In Excel, I can say, you know, I'm really only interested in uh, Bill's bookings. There they are. He's just got two of them. You know, typical Excel stuff. Now, if I save this, it saves with the OData feed link embedded within it, which means that the next time I open it, it's going to open with whatever the most recent data that's been published out to the OData server is. So I'm not necessarily going to get the same exact view every time I open the sheet. The beauty of that is that I can save this now and I can open it every Monday. And if I've scheduled this OData feed to be refreshed every day or every week, this is always going to show me the latest and greatest bookings from OpenAir. So I can see live open air data, essentially live, we'll talk about that in a minute, without going into open air, which means that I can publish this out to any of my BI tools and they will display the most recent data to whoever's using the BI tool without even having to have an open air login, let alone actually logging into open air. There's some real power there, especially when you're talking about putting together, say, dashboards for executives who don't really want to log into open air and try to learn where all the data is. So that's the power behind this tool, at least in, in most customers' cases. There's a, you can probably think of a number of instances where this could be useful. All right, so that's it for our demo. Let's continue on with the slides. So a few things you need to know. So there are the URLs that we talked about, reports and lists. Um, your account is just your company's name uh, in open air with any spaces replaced by dashes. It's the same as if you were using uh, OpenAir itself. You can see here ours is top step Colton Sulting. I just pull it right out of there and that's my account. And then the list views or reports with the word report and the internal ID of the report or list view. For desktop versions, don't use this. This looks like what you would use because it's similar to what we just used in the 365 version. It doesn't work. Can't explain why, don't totally know why. We know it doesn't work. If you have a desktop version, use this instead. New query from other sources from OData feed. It's, for whatever reason, it's different than using this from other sources right here on the data tab. So something to remember if you're using this from a desktop version of Excel. For 365, I showed you this, get data from other services, from sources, and then from the OData feed. Okay, now when you get the login, this is what the login screen looks like, at least in Excel. It only provides you two fields to log in, a username and a password. Now, if you've used OpenAir, you know that it takes three fields to log into OpenAir a company, a username, and a password. The way they've done this is they've combined the company name just exactly as you would use it in the open air login with the spaces or whatever, and then a backslash and the, and the username. So you have to combine the company and the username into that username field. That throws people off every time. Um, so keep that in mind, that's very important. You'll never get through without this. And make sure you use the right slash um, that's another thing that throws folks off a lot. And then the password is just exactly what it is, the password. And then this will show, by default, it'll show the URL of the open air instance that you're going to. In our case, it was the demo instance. Couple gotchas. If you're using SAML, you're out of luck. And SAML, for those of you not familiar, it's a single sign-on. If you are using a single sign-on method to get to open air, Business Intelligence Connector is not going to work. You have to be able to log in directly to OpenAir. Um, there is no support for single sign-on. That can be a big problem. But it, again, 
if you're not familiar with how this works, if you are using SQL sign-on, uh, administrators have the ability to turn that off and on for individual users. So you can still use this as long as you're using it under the username of someone who does not have single sign-on turned on. There are also request limits, just like scripts and API calls. Um, you can only make a certain number of requests to those OData servers. Now, these are pretty high limits, unlike the <laughs> scripts and API calls, which frankly are fairly slim. Uh, these are not. These are pretty significant for the OData uh, servers. So you're not likely to run into the per minute one probably ever, and it's not going to be very common to run into the 24-hour limit. But be aware that they exist. A couple other gotchas. The Business Intelligence Connector supports OData version 4 only. Now, this is a very minor issue because if you have a tool that's trying to access things with version three or earlier, you have a tool that was written and deployed at least 12, 15 years ago. OData 4 is the standard, has been for some time. Uh, so this really shouldn't be too much trouble, although it, we have seen clients who have run into this as a limitation. The data is one way only, it comes from open air to the, data, to the OData server, does not go back. If you make changes, if I made changes to that data in Excel, that data would get overwritten the next time I refreshed that OData server. It does not go back to open air. It's one way only. Uh, and now this one's kind of a big deal. You can schedule these to refresh in the OData server, any of these reports and these list views, but you can only have them refresh once a day. No more frequent than that. Um, what folks have done to get around that, if they need a report out there and they need it to refresh every couple hours, they've created eight versions of the exact same report and published them all on different schedules. That is a hack. Um, it's not a good way of, of doing things uh, from the standpoint that you then have eight versions of this report that you have to update if you ever wanted to make a change. Um, but that is the only automated way around this uh, issue. You can manually send these over as often as you want, but you can only schedule them to be refreshed once a day. All right, that's everything that I had to offer today. I'm gonna to go ahead and shut down the recording.